This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. After closing in mid-March to slow the spread of COVID-19, many tribes in Minnesota are reopening their casinos. Reporter Melissa Townsend has more. Joe Nikwanami, the head of the Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe's Corporate Ventures, said the decision to close was a difficult one. But he says the decision to reopen is even more difficult. It's harder because there's this fact that we will be increasing the same risks that we were trying to avoid by closing. The Upper Sioux community opened their doors earlier in May. The Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux community, Prairie Island Indian community, the Red Lake Nation, and the Mille Lacs and Boys Fort Bands of Ojibwe casinos are all reopening this week. Angela Hikus is president and CEO of the Shakopee Mdewakanton Sioux community gaming enterprise. We are uh, really watching and understanding the guidance coming from the federal government, the CDC, different health organizations coming from the state of Minnesota. We also have our own tribal public health department. The casinos are not opening to full capacity so that patrons can practice social distancing. Customers will have their temperatures taken at the entrances. Shakopee is requiring everyone to wear masks. Mille Lacs is not. Other tribes around the country are also reopening their casinos. Jason Giles, Muskogee Creek, is executive director of the National Indian Gaming Association. To be honest, it's not without its hiccups right off the bat. I mean, there's been already reports of employees showing up asymptomatic, but they have the virus. There's been other reports of, you know, people showing up not wearing a mask. Giles says there are some tribes who say they will not reopen their casinos in the near future. There's plenty of tribes in South Dakota and North Dakota, uh, Arizona, New Mexico, some of the tribes that just don't have strong health care systems on the reservation and are Mm -hmm. a commute away from the nearest hospital, they are at particular risk if the virus starts to spread. Here in Minnesota, tribal casino heads say they will pay close attention to what's happening and adjust as needed. That was Melissa Townsend reporting. Minnesota's Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, a citizen of the White Earth Nation, is speaking out as people in Minneapolis protest the death of George Floyd, an African-American man who died in police custody this week. It goes without saying that no one should be treated differently by law enforcement due to the color of their skin, and no one should live in fear of law enforcement because of the color of their skin. The grief in this moment is unbearable. Members of the Native community are among those calling for justice and drawing attention to police violence against people of color, including Native Americans. Cell phone video from Monday's incident showed George Floyd face down on the ground, with a white police officer kneeling on the back of his neck. Floyd says he can't breathe and appears to go unconscious. Thousands of people protested in Minneapolis Tuesday and Wednesday. The Minneapolis Police Department fired four officers involved, and the city's mayor is calling for their prosecution. The president of the Navajo Nation announced what he says is good news in the tribe's fight against COVID-19. President Jonathan Nez in a virtual town hall this week said the curve is flattening, pointing to health department statistics showing the peak was reached on the Navajo Nation in April. Nez says it's due to a majority of citizens following emergency orders. The things that you were all doing, Navajo Nation public, worked by staying home. As of Wednesday, the tribe reported nearly 5,000 positive COVID-19 cases, more than 150 deaths, and more than 1,000 recoveries. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. It's the circle of life that teaches us to take care of each other, to use our voice when we are in need. Like the circle of life, there is an opportunity that comes around every 10 years, a chance to participate and let others know who we are and where we are. The 2020 Census will be our opportunity to shape our future for generations to come. Shape our future. Start here. Learn more at 2020census.gov. Paid for by U.S. Census Bureau. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.